Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm Courtney. And I'm MK. And how are you? <laughs> you sounded like you're like in this dream state. I'm like ready to tell you a bedtime story. Actually, that would be terrible if I talked like that the whole time because we'd both fall asleep. We would immediately fall asleep. <laughs> um, I'm okay. Um... <laughs> This is the third episode we have recorded tonight, um, which is like the sixth episode we've recorded this week since everything we did today is re-recording things. Um, I have had like a third of a bottle of wine and only eaten once today. And I just sent my fiance a video of a man laughing about ants for four minutes and said this is where i'm mentally at and he didn't seem concerned or shocked which means that i'm probably more unhinged than i realize on a daily basis and um i don't know what that means about me (laughs) you know i was not surprised you sent it it just means dan understands that you're more unhinged now that's the part because if you sent this like six months ago, I feel like he would have been like, are you okay? Do you want to talk about it? And we're past that now. Yeah. We've moved on. Yeah. Um, today I tried to call earlier. I tried to call him and he didn't answer. And so I just texted him and said, I'm not okay. Because then I knew that as soon as he saw that, he would call me back. Because if I just say, hey, he'll be like, hey, what's up? No, I, I need yeah. to talk to you. I'm not okay right now. I need you to respond and then he's like after we talked he's like you know you can call me anytime and i wanted to be like yeah except when you don't fucking answer while i'm crying (laughs) i I did i did call you anytime but i i didn't because that's not fair he was playing hogwarts legacy it's not his fault did i tell you i bought hogwarts legacy (laughs) actually no i think you did yeah no dan's not playing it he was really excited um he to show me everything about it and um he just kept trying to show me all these rooms in the castle and i was like this castle is too big it's too big i can't i i don't even know where you are anymore but i, I do very far. i do appreciate that peeves looks like peeves like he looks like it makes sense i haven't even out. seen him yet well good to know peeves does look in fact like a poltergeist and not just another fucking Excellent. ghost so like i love that yeah i um i bought it when I got like my healthcare refund, mm. like a month and a, a month, a, two weeks That's ago. What, what month am I in? January. It it's like January. Three, two, three weeks ago, and I played like up to the credits, which is like not very long. Mm-hmm. And then I played like one more time, and I yeah. probably am not even like past the beginning. I was like, so are you even I'm at the castle slow. yet? I am at the castle. I am at the oh, castle okay. and I have made it to Hogsmeade one time. Oh, I got okay. my wand. Oh, so okay. yeah, no, no, no. I did I did indeed get that far because I started it too late one night and played an extra hour mm. before instead of yeah. going to bed. Totally. Um, fair. which is just checks out life. Yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um uh, yeah. yeah, so I too am unhinged. At the moment, it's been a long day. Like you said, this is our third recording. Um, and uh, yeah. I did a Panda Express in between the last time we spoke, which is yeah, nice. I um, had a really, really shitty gluten-free cookie, and I regret it. So I watched you take a bite of it before I could hear you. <laughs> and it was a joyful experience for me. So <laughs> I didn't I didn't know Courtney was back from her Panda Express and I had the camera on still and I was just playing my Disney Magic Kingdoms and I took a bite of this cookie and I <laughs> felt in my face the visual reaction that happened when I <laughs> It was the first second I saw you when I got back to my couch. Like that was like, what I came back to. <laughs> um it was amazing. I, um so don't get those those things. No, uh, I feel bad. One of my students is severely gluten free. And so like whenever we have like class parties, he brings in treats for kids and like good for him. He like tries his best and sometimes he gets stuff that's really good. And like this one actually wasn't one he got. It was one another kid's parents got because Mm -hmm. they were gluten free to like Mm -hmm. be helpful. 
But if you, if you eat gluten-free as a lifestyle, you have figured out what is, or a life or a choice or right. like not a choice if it's medical, but if that is the like life that you live, you figure out what things are good and what things aren't. Right. If you are just trying to be helpful and buy things that are labeled certified gluten-free for someone else and you have no concept of what they taste like, it doesn't always turn out very well. You should well. try them first. You should try yeah. them first. Um, speaking of unhinged, I did have to go to the Panda Express to get my dinner. Yeah. And I didn't realize until I got back, like, how insane my face looks. Because there are so many sparkles mm-hmm. on my face. Well, and so I show up, like, bundled, and I have, like, my pajama pants on because it's cold and it's a block away. Yeah. And then I, like, went to the bathroom and I looked at my face in my mirror when I got home, not in this camera situation. Yeah. And I just was like, they have to wonder <laughs> what's yeah. happening today. The story of my life is that I do my makeup for the podcast on camera because I need to know mm-hmm. what it's going to look like on camera with my ring light right. and my overhead light, all of it, Right. And then I go downstairs between episodes to grab something to drink or to talk to my mom. And she goes, Whoop, you're recording because <laughs> apparently recording it's a little, it's a little makeup. bit more drastic when you don't have a ring light in your eyes. So, yeah. um, and if you see me, I'm already pretty sparkly, like for a camera, like, yes, <laughs> you, yeah. Like you're already sparkly like, on camera. So off camera, I'm sure right. you look like a stripper. Yeah, absolutely. They have to have had a lot of questions when I came in, but they didn't ask any of them. They just gave me my food and let me leave. So kudos. Also, I am my last update for today. Yeah. I am insanely obsessed with Monopoly Go now. I know it's like a fad. I know everyone else is also obsessed. Yeah. I refuse to get involved in this Facebook trading group. I tried. It's insane. I'm not doing yeah. it. So I've created my own Monopoly group between Rachel and Caitlin and Aunt Carolyn. And that's my only that's my only group trading now. Okay. So if you guys want to join my group trading, you are welcome to because as long as you don't act a fool. See, I only play games that don't require me to interact with other people. Like the two games that I'm like super oh. involved in are Travel Town and Disney Magic yeah. Kingdoms, which I build up my worlds and I do not need other people to help me build them. Sure. So you can do this by yourself. Yeah. It's just the option to trade cards because it's like you want to build the decks of cards, like all the different sets. Yeah. No, and Travel Town, I have to build, on Travel Town, I have to build card yeah. deck sets too. But like instead of trading with people, they just want me to spend money. Well, Monopoly Go also wants that. <laughs> like they want you to do all of those things. And the first mm-hmm. time I played this, the second time I played it, the first time I played it, I did not play with other people. Mm. But this time I have chosen to play with other people, but like we're all, like halfway through the yeah. like set and now there's no, no extra cards. No one has any yeah. extra anyway. So, well, the, uh, the one that I do have that I can trade with other people is bingo blitz, but I very rarely, I very rarely trade with people um, because usually the cards that I'm stuck I'm trying on to break into the door. <laughs> I hear them like shaking the door, not my oh, door, but the outside door. But the yeah. in, inner, but they're in the inside. Oh, that's like good. In the mail that's room. not good. Yeah. Um, so, but so because no. of all of that, you know what I need right now to bring us all back together? Absolutely. A little spiritual guidance. It's all right. Today, I would like to tell you that skill and confidence are an unconquered army. Correct. Correct. No one, no one can am- defeat you you have the skills and you're confident it's usually the confidence that's kind of a stickler though i have the confidence i am going to punch this person in the face if they keep banging on the door they are like they sound unhinged i don't know if they are but they sound it and it's already driving me insane so quick before we get into the episode just one quick last quick update since mm-hmm. honestly it's fair because last week we spent like 60 minutes talking about broadway True. and not american horror story if you listened to sunday's sci-fi sunday and you were curious about what my mom was excited about <laughs> she and i both have a snow day tomorrow so we get to have a girl's day at the house so yeah. that's what it was. She texted me just woohoo as if I was supposed to know what that was. And I was very confused. But then by the time I got to the second floor before she was on the first floor, before I got to the first floor, when I was on the middle of the second floor, I go, oh, I bet she has a snow day. I think that's what that is. But, and it was, I was correct. So yeah, I still don't have a snow day. 
No, you don't. And I'm That's really okay. sorry about that. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but what is good, and the only good thing for me, is that we today we are talking about American Horror Story Asylum, episode three. And ironically, it is called Nor'easter. Yeah, snowstorm. Someone is. They got yeah. Oh. Oh. I think it must have been a delivery. Oh, well, that was a really aggressive for a delivery. No, it was like he was begging, and I'm like, go back outside and buzz the door again. Like, you just didn't yeah. get to the second door in time. Like, obviously. So. I I just get a little concerned when I start hearing banging around my apartments and oh, the absolutely. first door walk in. Yeah, so no, I'm, I'm not I trying to die today. Can't imagine why you would feel that way. Yeah. So this episode aired October 31st, 2012. Happy Halloween. It is our first American Horror Story Halloween episode. Um, I guess only season two, but it's still the first one. Um, it was rated 8.2 out of 10, which is Point one less than last week. Um, Which is, I think, too high. But that's just me. See, I really liked this episode. We'll get to it. Um, the number one song is Still One More Night for the rest of our lives, I guess. Mm-hmm. The number one movie is Wreck-It Ralph, which is so fun. So I love fun. Wreck-It Ralph. The number one book is The Panther by Nelson DeMille. And it's part of the John Corey series, which I've never read. But apparently it's very popular because there's a thousand of them. Yeah, sounds um, about right. So on this day, Brian Cobby passed away. He is known for Evita and the nudist story. But for most importantly to me, he is the first male voice of the British speaking clock. Which is so fun. I just think that's weird. I don't know. It It's confusing to me. It's it almost is, as like if Siri died. I know, but it's really weird because the first time I ever saw the picture of the woman who's the voice of the New York City MTA trains, I was like, no, because you can't be a real person. Because then all of the like mm-hmm. horrible things that I've said about trains to the train, it can't exist because you're a real person. And that's not fair. I have never Mm. looked up the MTA train person, and I probably never will because I do like to say bad things about the train because some days it sucks. Today (laughs) it was actually very on point, so I'm train positive today, but stay tuned. Stay tuned. It will will mess up again, Um, especially if I start having to take the G train, which is the worst train. I heard it's better. I hate it. I will never believe it's better until I see it. Um, it's also the day that Jerry Sandusky was transferred to holding to start his 30 to 60 year sentence. So, kudos. Yeah. Shut up longer. It's fine. And this is also when it was announced that Disney bought Lucasfilm. Which is great. Um, once Disney bought Lucasfilm, we began the Disney XD era of the cartoons and we got to sneak Rebels was great um yeah on the the live action movies that happened not not as excited but the cartoons happened bad batch rebels out of 10 i am a very low knowledge level of star wars Mm -hmm. right before the new one came out so like episode seven or whatever um was the first time i ever watched all of them and me and Mary, you are Mary Kate. Me and Amy <laughs> sat down at her house and watched all of them together. We did like an all nighter type thing. And so yeah. I saw them and then I watched the new one. And that is my experience now. That's it. Um, one of Dan's groomsmen has um, a Lego ship from the first, from the prequel series that took him 22 mm-hmm. hours to build. And um, he, opened the door of his office to show it to us and Dan and Doug and I all started crying a little bit. So like I bet that was really fun though. Oh my god. Um oh, I love Dan, Dan and I have built a Lego London Skyline together and um we built the Lego globe that Doug got him for Christmas, but we haven't built the typewriter yet. 
So we have Legos <gasps> to build. You have a typewriter? I didn't tell you about my Christmas present from Douglas. No. Oh my God. We have Doug really talked about Christmas. No, yeah. <laughs> no, we never talked about Christmas. Doug went way overboard and it was really so much that I cried. Um, but he, first of all, he got Dan and I chopping boards, like cutting boards for our kitchen, for our kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, and with, he just handed the packages and said, these two are kind of for both of you. And without knowing what we were doing, Dan handed one to me and opened one himself. And it was perfect because the one he opened had a Bill's logo on it. It was really cool. The one I opened said, I murder murder vegetables here. <laughs> that tracks. That was right. That was good. Perfect. Then he got um us both like big giant Lego sets and like got um dan a globe that is like full size and spins like actually <gasps> moves and he got me a typewriter that has working keys it doesn't actually type anything because it doesn't have ink but sure. it has like it has like working keys and like a bar that it's is amazing fine. i'll take Dad pictures when besties i'll take pictures when we have bailed it but it is uh, i will i'm so jealous i want that it was amazing he did too much. I need to get something like that for like Rachel's house so I can go do it over there and leave it there. That's what yeah. I do. I get all my stuff and I take it to Rachel's and then I do whatever. And then you just leave it there. there. <laughs> she has a whole house. It's fine. Yeah. Well, once Dan and I get a house so we can have a room that's just, that's where Aunt Courtney's stuff lives. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's literally like Caitlin has one, Rachel has one. My mom's gotten rid of all of my things. So if my mom doesn't, but <laughs> Caitlin, Caitlin has all of my graduation stuff at her house. Um, yeah, I just live in other people's houses because yep. I don't have room in mine. So I, I mean, to be to fair, to yours. be fair, my mom has offered for you to actually live in. I know. I know. <laughs> so yeah, so maybe I'll have a room there too. We'll see. When you move out, I'll just take your room. You won't need it anymore. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So right. our director, we are going to do our very best to stay on topic, but it is ten thirty that we are starting this. So. Hang in there. Um, our director is Michael Uppendahl, who we know from season one. They have only directed one other episode, and it was Piggy Piggy. It's my least favorite episode of the show. And so far, this is my least favorite episode of these three that we have seen. So I'm starting to think I just don't like him as a director. Yeah, I mean, I really don't like Piggy Piggy. Um, I like this episode, but I understand that it doesn't really fit in season. Yeah. Um, I just like it in general. And but I like I think I like the writing. I don't necessarily care for the directing. Yeah. Um I mean there were some good there were some good moments. There were some good moments. There was yeah. a couple good things, but as a whole, it just felt disjointed and I did not like the yeah. the choices of lighting and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's totally fair. Um, our writer is Jennifer Salt, who we've also seen, but we've seen her a lot. She's mm-hmm. been in a lot of the episodes, so nothing new. And then our editor is Fabian Bouvet, who we've also seen before. Only like a couple of times, but they have been an editor before. Um, our guest, our regular star today, <laughs> yeah. I keep calling him different things, um, is James Cromwell, who plays Dr. Arden. I saw him in Grand Horizons on Broadway with Michael Urey and Love of My Life, Ben McKenzie, um, and Ashley Park. Oh, I love her. I can't remember who the mom was, but it was like all five of them were like insane. Same. I can't remember who played the mom. Anyways, but like, yeah, it was an insane cast and they were all incredible. Um, oh, and the guy from Community that plays um, Abed. Abed. Abed? Is that his name in Community? Oh, um, Ahmed. Ahmed? Uh, yeah. Oh, what is his name? Oh, I know it. But that guy, he was in it too. Um, so James Cromwell is known for LA Danny Pooty. Danny yes. Pooty, yes. Abed, yes, that's great. what it is. Abed, I was right. I thought so. I used to be obsessed with that show. Um, so, anyways, James Cromwell is known for LA Confidential, The Green Mile, Star Trek First Contact, and The General's Daughter. I've only seen The Green Mile, and it's been a thousand years since I've seen it. Yeah, so I don't even remember him being in it. Um, but. He also was the voice of Robert Callahan in Big Hero 6, which I didn't know, but you knew. 
Was that yes. right? Yeah, because he also was in um, Babe. He played the farmer in yes. the Babe movies. And um, he he was great. He played Prince Philip in the movie about Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip that Helen Mirren played Queen Elizabeth in. Yep. Um, he's fantastic. It just, I think it was just called The Queen or something. Qu- yeah, just Queen. Something like or the, the Queen, queen. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the queen. You're right. Um, but, yeah. but then, of course, also, obviously, if he did Star Trek things, I know him. That's yeah. kind of how that goes. So, yep. And um, he at six feet six and a half inches. He is the tallest Oscar nom. He is the tall- tallest person ever nominated for an Oscar. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I don't know why my voice is going out, but here we are. Um, he was part of the committee that defended 13 of the black panthers and then those panthers got off um and he also has had many arrests during animal protest nights and he has got a little intense with it he's had like regular protests where you hold signs or you stand in front of like animal shelters or whatever yeah. like normal protesting but then he's also done things like bring pictures of skinned cats and videos of things that are not pleasant to look at to like classes for people to see i do believe they were college classes at least but it did not really specify no, so it, like it's, it's not great yeah it's, it's like there, you, you're almost there but you've crossed over and not solid back a bit yeah. but uh and last but not least he is the only actor in star trek to say star trek while on the show like yes. in the show, which yes. is fun. Yep. Um. Again, never seen Star Trek, so doesn't mean a lot to me. But everyone else might enjoy that fact. Um. So now we start again in today's 2012 world, where Jenna Dewan and Adam Levine are still alive. Oh, because they in can't the fly. Die. Is Adam Levine still alive? Like Jenna Dewan, Jenna Dewan, we've just seen running around a lot, and she like only vaguely yeah. started to get attacked at the end of last episode. So like, fine, she's still running. Don't really know why I need to be watching it, but fine. Right? How is Adam Levine still alive? I have no idea. He has no blood. <laughs> he has no arm. He has not gotten off the floor. He's been like mostly unconscious this whole time yeah. until this scene when yeah. he like stabs back and like gets him off of Jenna Dewan. And then Jenna, like, and then as soon as, um, but, but also like Adam's being stabbed like millions of times. It's not like he didn't also get stabbed. Yeah. Um, and then a fight ensues. They stab bloody face. And then they start while they start calling 911, they immediately get shot in the back because turns out that this is three dumb kids who are dressed as bloody face trying to quote unquote scare people. Yeah. But they keep freaking stabbing him. Like, the kid stabbed him before he got stabbed back. So, like, maybe. Oh, no, in this this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like... Yeah, yeah, this guy. Yeah. Well, because yeah. then... Then, these the dumb kid... One of them is absolutely a sociopath. And he's, like, freaking out about so how, like, great it felt when they fell like a sack of potatoes after he shot them. And then he realizes that Adam Levine has no arm. And he's like, well... And he panics. He he's like our friend definitely didn't do that, and then another totally fine face. that he stabbed him, but he didn't cut off his arm. Don't worry. Then another They're bloody face here. comes running down the hallway after the two kids, and yeah, that's that's not great. And honestly, they had it coming. Oh, you're gonna be dressing up as a murderer and attacking people. One of your friends <laughs> stabbed a guy; sure. the other one started shooting people. So like, yeah, no, absolutely, they deserved it, but. For a split second, when they unmasked themselves, I was like, oh, thank God. It's just kids fucking around. Because right. in, I actually don't think I ever talked about this on the podcast that you saw, because I think I talked about it in one of the Lost episodes. But I was very torn because my original thought was that Dr. Arden had something to do with Bloody Face, but that he couldn't possibly actually be Bloody Face because if bloody face was in the modern day asylum because he was too old for that and like sure maybe he has some weird kind of 
serum or something, but like it just, it didn't check out age wise for him to be the modern bloody face. But then it was just kids fucking around and I was like, oh good. But then it wasn't just kids fucking around and I was like, wait, no, I don't understand. Nothing makes sense. Welcome to American Horror Story. This is it. Yeah. And at that moment, we hit the credits. And then as we come back from the credits, we start the story that's actually a story. And we're at the asylum. And Sister Jude and Sister Mary Eunice are talking about the mail because Sister Mary Eunice has brought it in while Sister Jude is kind of like flitting about. She's she's distraught. And so yes. she goes to look at the mail. And at the same time, Mary Eunice says, a storm is coming. Well, we all know there's a demon involved. So, like, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And whenever. um, And she tries to, like. Is this the part where she tries to. Yeah. So. She tries to tell her that there's something wrong with the communion wine. And. No. Is that the next scene? That's. Yeah. That, this is. This one. She just hands her the mail and says, like, this is the mail. And then. Um, Sister Jude sees the newspaper and is like, where did this come from? And she's like, the mailbox. And she was like, no, but who brought it? And she goes, the mailman. And I was like, (laughs) while I know that Sister Mary Eunice is currently like possessed by a demon, um, not because they told me, but because I'm just sure of it, because I've seen enough demonic possession to know that that's what's happening. Um, I I was like, well, I know that that's what's going on right now. Um, that also might have been my favorite moment ever because like, it was just so unnecessarily sassy. But also, like, that's the proper answer. Like, if someone's what? asking you where the mail came from that you bring in probably every day, right? why are you acting a fool about it all of a sudden? Right. Like, this is just an everyday occurrence. But why um, she's acting a fool about it is because she looks down and it's the paper from the day after her hit and run and she sees the date. And the girl that has been hit by a car. Which, as we know, is her car. So, then we go to Dr. We have a brief clip with Dr. Arden, who is trying to put this, like, chip back together that we found in um, (laughs) Kit's neck. Mm -hmm. And he's just staring at it. And then it just puts itself back together. Because, like, a magnet. That's normal. Right. And so, we go back to Sister Jude. And she is panicking still as per this whole episode and she's like kneading bread when dr thresden walks in and starts talking about bf skinner and he's like look you do all these crazy things that are no good for anyone like all you're doing is abuse but you know bf skinner says like positive reinforcement works too like why don't you try that and she is just like angrily responding and she's like i'm gonna do a movie night this is the answer. We're going to do it. We're going to see if it works. And it's like, okay, calm down about your movie night. And Great like, idea. Here's the thing. I was like, on the one hand, she's clearly lost her mind and does not know yeah. where else to turn. But on the other hand, like, she's like, there's a storm coming and I can't leave the patients alone in their room during a storm. So we're going to have a movie night so that I can occupy them. So they're not thinking about the storm. And I was like, that might be That's the nice. most sane thing you've said in three episodes. Yeah. For sure. It's for I mean, sure the choice the of movie, the choice of movie concern yeah, could, um, could have been better. But, uh, <laughs> but we'll hear about that from Sister Mary Eunice. Don't you worry. Oh, don't you um, worry. So we learn about this movie night. And as she's, you know, kneading her bread still, Dr. Thurston asks for Judd's autopsy report. And she's like, what, what? And he's like, no, I just want to make sure that we're not budging anything that it doesn't say it's like natural causes or something. And she's like, well, if it's natural causes for a 17 year old to die from a heart attack and, um, which obviously is not, not. no. And, um, but then at this moment, she decides that he's the one that brought the newspaper out of nowhere. And she starts just being like hella paranoid and she's yelling about it. And he obviously has no idea what's going on. He's like, I don't even, yeah. I didn't even know we had a newspaper, much less like I didn't. Get it. <laughs> I've never read a um, book in my life. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about anything. Um, I don't even know what today is, which would be my response. And then 
she's telling him all this and she's like, you know what? It doesn't matter. In two weeks, you're out of here anyways. You'll be done with your investigation. Everything will be settled and you're gone. So then we go to Sister Mary Eunice. Yeah. Bless her heart. So she's telling everyone about movie night in perhaps the creepiest fashion. Well, because not only is her description creepy, which I will let you share because I know how much you love it. But um, I I say that I hate the show, but then I get unnecessarily invested in these characters at, at every moment. And Sister yes. Mary Jonas walks into the common room and turns the record player off. And I gasped. Like, I full on gasped. And, um... Dan, who hates this show and also didn't watch last the second episode, was like, are you okay? I was like, she can't do that. And then she started talking and I go, oh God, and she can't do that. <laughs> because not only does she decide to describe this movie to the, to the um, people, I wanted to say inmates, but they're not in jail. So just the people. I mean, she I says, feel like they're still kind of inmates. They are, but like yeah. technically they're not supposed to be. <laughs> and uh, she okay. says, we're all going to be together in the dark watching The Sign of the Cross, a movie full of fire, sex, and the death of Christians. What fun! And I've never seen her more joyful, like in her life. Yeah. She can't wait for this. Um, and then we have a Mexican woman who is just panicking she's like holding her cross and like she's just keeps calling sister mary Eunice the devil which is accurate uh -huh. and um just like freaking out and then we go over to our dream team and kit etc they're yes. all um planning their escape and he finally tells and like lana's like you know not on board he's like look i don't blame you for what happened if <laughs> If I believed what you believed about me, I would have done the same thing. Uh huh. You're wrong, but we all know better now. So let's move on and escape together. Like he's being very rational for someone who should want to murder. Like even if he's not like, especially if he's not a murderer, it yeah he should be. Like right. these people have all earned it. So yeah, it's insane. So now we go to the scene with Sister June that I thought was much earlier for some reason. But we are talking to the security guy detective, um, Frank. And we learned yeah. that she's been having him, like, follow Kit around and see, like, you know, follow all these people around and see what's going on. So she starts asking him if he's seeing anything strange. And then Sister Mary Eunice comes in and when the detective leaves. And she brings in the communion wine and she's like, hey, someone's drinking the communion wine. I just know it. If you drink it, it's going to be basically water. And she's like, here, give it a try. And Sister Jude just stares at it. And she's like, oh, right, right, right. You've been sober since whatever the date of the hit and run was. I don't remember the date. But it was like June 6, 1940 something. And she's yeah. like, she's like, yeah, that's totally fine. I'll try it. So this woman starts just like chugging communion wine. She's like, no, no, it's totally fine. Never mind. No one's drinking it. It's perfect. Yeah. Like, I haven't had communion wine because I'm not Catholic. Correct. And we had grape juice as children. Yeah. Um, but I don't imagine that I want to sit there and just drink communion. Especially because it's also supposed to be like the blood of Christ. Yeah. So here's the thing about that. Catholic education. That's it. The bread and wine is just wine. And terrible tasting wafers. Until, the wafers. until the actual sacrament or the ceremony in the right. church. And then mm -hmm. once the priest blesses them, there is what is it is a process that is called transubstantiation, where the belief is that the prayer actually physically alters these two elements and they are no longer right. wine and bread. Um to the point where my mom's great uncle, so like my great grandma's brother, um, was a priest. 
who was also a recovering alcoholic. Mm -hmm. But he had wine with communion all of the time because it was no longer alcohol. I have questions, but, but if the wine has not been blessed and is just in storage, it is just wine. Um, but also like with progressiveness and things, I believe some churches use non-alcoholic wine. I also don't know because I think that there's some idea that that makes it not the real sacrament. I don't know. I don't really understand some of the political parts of the things. But if that church, if that wine was in the container that it was in at that moment, it was not blessed and it was just wine. Yeah, I um have not been adult Catholic, so like, I've no, never I. Been. An experience. Yeah, no, I um, I went to Catholic high school. I had to take Catholic religion classes. I teach at a Catholic school, and I'm marrying a Catholic man. And I also so have a lot of Catholic. Yeah, and I also have like my aunt is a nun, and my uncle was a priest. So like, I, yeah. I have the the uh, I'm the the resident Catholic expert. Um, and I am not at all Catholic. Right. Yeah. My uh, my mom's family is all Catholic, and my dad's family except my dad is all catholic and um i went to catholic law school yeah and then i went to a jewish law school so like i just spread it out learn it all yeah. um but yeah oh i forgot so, i also go to a catholic university <laughs> yeah and i have priests that are in my classes with me yeah. See, there you go that's fine killing it um and so she's you know drinking all the wine and whatnot and then she pulls and then sister jude's like what is this on your face because she has a full like full red lip that is like bright and she's like yeah get this off she goes to wipe it off and she's like oh my gosh i'm so sorry this isn't even my lipstick it's for you it's from dr art she's like i hope you don't mind that i tried it so of course sister jude is horrified because right. one anything coming from dr Arden is horrifying yeah. but also you know red lips and well and also because and um because not just that because um she says and sister mary Eunice is like oh this color it's your favorite color it's ravish me red which we've already learned has some implications just a, just a couple just a couple yeah and um so then we go to dr arden said said doctor and he's talking to kit and he's telling him, he's like, this is obviously spy tech. You've been sent in here to spy on me and learn about all my science things. First of all, you're not that important. Calm down. But he's like telling him all this. And he's like, it's definitely a working magnet. Like I watched it go back together. So there's another piece of it somewhere in you. Tell me who you work for and tell me where the other piece is. And he's no, like, you're insane. I don't know anything you're telling me right now. And... So his solution, as opposed to just letting it go or like rationally looking at it more from a scientific view, as opposed to just like seeing it go back together and deciding all of these things, just start slicing kid open again. See if he can find another Yeah. Piece. Well, so here's the thing. In this little speech where he's calling Kit a spy and he's saying awful things and he's threatening him, he also, when he asks who he works for, he also asks if Kit is an alien or a Jew. And he does not mean alien like from the he, sky. No, no. What it means is that Dr. Arden, and here's the thing Dr. Arden is a doctor in the 60s doing unlicensed medicine, medical things that people don't really understand, which means he's 100% a Nazi. Like there's no, there's he like could not be closer to what's his face, <gasps> the guy that was Ugh. Hitler's doctor guy. He yeah, guy. Yeah, literally. But like the timeline and the hiding and the working with the church, but like not really with the church. And like there's, he's a Nazi. Yeah. Yep, he's a, a an anti-Semitic racist. <laughs> Yeah, no, and like amongst other things. Yeah, but so um, 
if I didn't already hate him, the fact that he was like, hey, I'm a Nazi, let me slice open the neck of the only character that Mary Kate likes, that is um, pretty much how you get yourself on my permanent shit list. Yeah, he definitely knew it was exactly going to affect you. And Yeah, so no, for sure. 11 years after it came out, 12 years, what year are we in? I don't know what year we're in. It's, it's, um, um, it's 11 and a half years after it came out. Years. But also, so, like, not even, like, fictionally. I mean, like, Dr. Arden from 1960 Briarcliff fictional bullshit. Mm-hmm. He, he personally attacked me. Yes, yes, he did. And, uh, so then we go to the panicked Mexican woman who is in her cell just trying to survive. And Sister Mary Eunice goes to talk to her. And she just keeps calling her Satan. Yeah. Telling her to go away. Like she's doing the best she can with her prayers. And Sister Mary Eunice, like, gets her down off the bed and then makes her pray with her. Again, demons praying, bad sign. Yeah. And as she's having her pray and repeat after her, she stabs her in the neck and in the chest. And that was just so unnecessary. It was so unnecessary. I, we all know I don't do eyeballs. I also don't do necks. They're the two only two like gore things that really just, I can't stomach. It freaks me out. Um, but I, I don't like gore when it's unnecessary. I feel that a lot of times in granted, I've only seen a season and a chunk of American Horror Story, but so far, even when there's been blood, even when there, there's been gore, it hasn't been egregious. Like obviously the bloody face stuff, very bloody. He had people stabbing each other in like the whole, that whole Jenna and Adam scenes are violent and bloody, but they're not like, they're not like that bloody. They're not gross. Like you don't just see blood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's like the abandoned warehouse, like grunge blood vibe to it, but right. like not, not gross. I don't think there was anything in Murder House that like I felt was like super gory. Because even yeah, like they were, like uncomfortable moments, but they weren't like gory right. The, moments. the only really gory, uncomfortable moments were when you saw the kids that Tate shot. Yeah. Like, but that was like so necessary mm-hmm. in terms of story. I do not feel that this was necessary. And the only other moment that I felt that something was violent and unnecessary was when Cam, who is it wasn't Cam because I know, don't remember the actor's yeah, name or sure. the character's name, was killed in Piggy Piggy. That was the only other time mm-hmm. that I was like, this is not necessary. And that's why I feel like it's the director and I just don't see eye to eye. No, I 100% agree with that. And like, and another thing, like this scene specific, like demons don't really seem to like stab and cut people. They like break necks, they break bones, they do like internal damage. And so you don't. Mm-hmm see a lot of it anyways when you have a possessed person i feel like yeah except for then don't don't ask blumhouse productions about that because they fucking stabbed chris's eyes out for no goddamn reason sure 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 Um, sure 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 um, blumhouse doesn't count in exercise and possession that's not real yeah um Um, but no but and the thing was i understand she was trying to get rid of the body so that she could feed it to the things in the woods Mm -hmm. fine you can have a dead body you can have a dead body with a snap knack. Like, I, I just, it was, it was. And if you're trying to hide it, you do a million stabbings. Like, there's blood everywhere now. You, right. Like, do you have time to clean that up? Now it's going to smell like bleach. It's going to be so and, obvious. And you, do you have time to clean up and not to clean it up on yourself? Like, that's just. Right. I don't, yeah. I don't like it. I don't like no, it. No, it's not a, it's not a smooth move and it's It's not, it's not the choice I would have made for the character no. and it's unnecessarily visual. So. Right absolutely one of my least favorite Um, moments so far but she does indeed kill her and then take her outside to feed her to the creatures our woodland creatures yeah Um, i like to make them sound a little cozier than they are (gasps) and now she goes to talk to dr arden and tell him that she did a feeding so that he can be proud of her her. 
Which and also feels weird because why does this um, demon need Dr. Arden's approval? I mean, if they need an ally, who are you going to partner with? The Nazi, like... Oh, ally, sure. Ally, sure, but, like, you don't need approval. You don't need to get on their good yeah. side. Like, that's weird. And maybe, like, it's just trying to butter him up, you know? Yeah. Maybe it's manipulation. I suppose. More than anything. Um, so, he, she's like, I'm really worried about them. Like, what do we do? Like, it's going to be winter out. There's a big storm coming. And Dr. Arden's like, not worried about the storm. He's like, no. they just have to get through winter. No problem. Yeah. And um, then Sister Mary Eunice starts like hardcore seducing him. And he like, like borderline porno pornographically. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Um, again, maybe not, maybe not the best choice. And, and that one at least felt more plot necessary than killing the Mexican woman. And more demony, more, more demony because they, but like borderline pornography. Yeah. Did not care yeah. for the word choice. Yeah, and then he starts calling her a whore and slapping her, and then she's just basically like, "You're no fun," and leaves. So we're in the common room now and we're setting up for movie night for this thrilling movie we're about to watch. And Lana starts talking to Dr. Thruston yeah. and she's like, I need some help. I need to talk to you. And he's like, well, I'm only authorized to talk to one patient here. I can't really like offer help to anyone else. And she's like, no, 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 no. Not that kind of help. She's like, I need to get a message to the outside. There's a woman who I haven't heard from. And I need to know what's going on because I don't understand why she hasn't like contacted me yet. Um, and I need her to know what's going on. And so she has this like hidden letter and he's like, Oh my God, you want me to defy sister Jude who's in charge of everything as he takes the letter to clearly deliver to Wendy. Yeah. 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 And so he's on his way. So now we're in the kitchen and Shelly walks over to grace because she's, been eavesdropping and listening to all their escape plans and she's like look i'm gonna help you do this we're gonna all escape together we're gonna have a really good game plan we're gonna go out i'm way smarter than everyone thinks i am i know everything that's going on around here let's work together grace is like hesitant and she's like you mm -hmm. just want to get out and like sleep around and she's like no i want to go to paris she's like you know you're from france and she's like i left when i was nine okay no one cares you mm -hmm. get it and she's like, so all I want to do is get out, go to Paris. They're like 20 years ahead of us in like sexual liberation stuff. And she's like, I would fit in. I wouldn't seem weird. Everything would be normal. And like, let's just go. And so Grace seems on board. So then we go to Dr. Arden and Sister June, which like, what a combination it always is. So yeah. she walks in and he's like making up a bed and she asks if he's feathering his love nest. Gross. Which is a choice of words. Uh -huh. I wouldn't personally use, but okay. And we learn that he's staying the night because of the storm. He doesn't want to leave because it's yeah. dangerous out. And then she starts asking him um, about like the, she's like, I heard that you talked to like Sister Mary Eunice, I can't believe all of this happened. He thinks she's talking about Sister Mary seducing him. And so yes. he's like, no, no, no. I never did anything. She's been like corrupted. She's like, he's like, I've never had purity. First of all, why are you telling people that? That is an insane thing to tell people. Yeah. But okay, fine. And he's like, but she but I, used to have it and I admired it. And but I also, broken. I wonder... In the way that he said that, I wonder if it had to do less with his own sexual life or if it was like his mother was openly sexual in front of him from a young age. So he never saw women as virginal or pure. And that is what he when he saw the women in the church, it was the first time he saw that in a woman and he admired that. Either is an option. Either is an option, and we'll learn more about his past. No, and I'm and I'm sure we but, will. But I also yeah. the way he said it, I I wasn't sure if it was 
it it didn't feel as much like it was pointed to his own like yeah. trauma it like it was or it, it situation more, he was in. yeah it felt more like yeah. trauma of what you lived through not trauma of what you did right yeah it did it did um so we'll see but regardless sister mary is now corrupted god Which, forbid. yeah the worst yeah and jude just like doesn't believe him at all and she's just losing it granted she's not like she's not wrong to not believe him but also <laughs> she's not going to believe anyone because she's paranoid delusional right now right she's apparently so, delusional like she's borderline like lo- schizophrenic at this current moment and dr arden is a sneak yeah. and a liar and a creep so like yeah so like she's so, not wrong so for the one but, time that he told the truth about something that was like uncomfortable i'm not really right. i'm not really blaming her for being like you are a f- liar right yeah and uh so she starts telling him that he's trying to take her job and he's like no 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 no. and the next thing he does is he asks her to take a leave and i'm like that does not follow up with your last statement but okay sir and um so she goes to her office and she's praying because she's trying to make everything stop and her phone rings and when she answers the phone it's the voice of the little girl that she ran over saying like shit why'd you leave me there i was all alone yada yada and then she looks at her desk and the broken glasses are on her desk and immediately she goes for the wine and she just starts drinking all of the wine the whole thing and like which is a lot we're talking like at least like the height of my wine bottle but wider wider Mm -hmm. yeah that's how I imagine I'll be at the end of dry January. But we'll see. We'll see. And so we go back to Dr. Arden, who is now looking at the lipstick and listening to the radio. And he's yeah. he looks creepy, but it's more important that you listen to the radio because they're talking about strange lightning that's happening and there's strange activity and like they don't know what's going on and they can't like place where it's coming from. Like alien are causing yeah, a lot the storm of, a lot of alien behavior sounds like so yep. back in the common room and sister jude starts yelling at people to settle in because it's time for movie night everyone settle in and she looks rough because she is real drunk and she is now drunkenly introducing this film and you know not doing great and then she starts this speech of and singing of walk on and never be alone and then she starts losing it again when she starts talking about someone being alone um over yeah. the little girl and she's like saying nonsense that like we get but like the rest of the place is just like i i don't know what's happening yeah um and then I, um as she was saying that i literally was watching it and i was like why is she singing carousel right now yeah it's it's a moment <laughs> it's a choice that she's made yeah. Um, and while she's doing this little show here, Dr. Thresden goes and sits down by Lana and he starts telling her about his experience with Wendy, from looking for Wendy. He says he asked around, no one could find her. And then he goes over to her house, her door is unlocked. So he just goes in, which you're just making a lot of choices. You're just doing a lot of things, probably yeah. for the best, but like, you don't even know. Right. But yeah, exactly. And, uh, he goes in and he starts he finds blood in the carpet and he's now convinced that she's another victim of bloody face it's like all of the details he's like all of the details line up with everything that we saw in all of the other cases which then means that kit cannot be bloody face because he is locked up and uh yeah that is a real slap in the face to uh our friend lana yeah and so we switch over to Grace, who is now asking you to go to the restroom. She's say, like, she's saying she's on her period just so the the Frank the guard security guy up. won't l- let her out. And so she goes, and then shortly after, everyone else follows. And then Lana notices that everyone's missing. So she turns to Dr. Thresden and she goes, you know, because of my condition, it's not really appropriate for me to be here with the women on the screen. And she's like, Sister Jude would understand. No. And he doesn't stop her. Fun fact. 
fact that I didn't share last week because I didn't think about it or last time that we tried to record this because I didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. That is actually not possible. So in the original 1932 Sign of the Cross movie, there was, in fact, Mm -hmm. a very explicitly naked dancing woman scene. Um, But people didn't really care for that very much. (laughs) It caused a lot of problems. And in 1938, the movie was re-edited to not have those scenes in it. And they weren't restored to the original 1932 version until 1993. So in 1969, a film of that movie would not have had that scene in it. Take that American Horror Story. Jennifer Salt, Ryan Murphy, get your facts right. Do your research. Not that hard. I like that fact. That's Especially fine. because um, all of that information is on Wikipedia, so it wasn't that hard to find. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you could have found it in like two and a half seconds. Right. Um, so then we're back to Sister Jude, who is now looking for the Mexican woman and can't, like, in her drunken state, we go to Dr. Arden, who is still with the lipstick. And then we're just in the halls. Lana has found our crew, Shelly, yeah. Kit, and Grace. And they're like discussing how they're going to get out. They agree to let Lana join them. And then they see Carl, the security guard, roam in the halls. And Shelly says, you know what? It's fine. I'm going to take care of him. Mm-hmm. You guys go wait for me if you can. If not, you guys get out of here. Yeah. And like, she is the smartest and like smoothest person here. She's the only one that's doing anything that makes sense. First of all, she's sacrificing right. herself for people that don't deserve it. I mean, I don't know. Kid Grace might, but like Lana does. Lana sure doesn't. No. And she's using her like sexual prowess as manipulation because that's what she has. That's her power in here. And so. Which also, seduce- which also yeah. means that, like, which also means that how much of her sexuality and her, like, being an infomaniac is, like, actually a problem and how much of it is her using her body. Right. Right. So, we'll see. And so, then we see Sister Jude sees someone basically out of the corner of her eye and tells them to stop. And they don't. Um, and we barely get to see what she sees. And then we go to Dr. Arden, who is now painting the nun statue. And with his lipstick. And then we have Shelly going down on Carl. And then the other three find the door. And they're trying to wait. They're trying to wait. And then, you know, she's taken forever. So they go. And then Dr. Arden just, like, loses it and just breaks the statue. That he's now painted all over with the lipstick. Yeah, and, and he just keeps calling Shelley, her a whore. And that is like... Yeah. Not, it's too much. Yeah. And then Shelly knocks Carl out and runs in, and runs away. But unfortunately, she runs into Dr. Arden, who is clearly in a crazed state of mind. He, like, felt so, almost more intoxicated than Sister Jude at this moment, which, like, obviously yeah. wasn't true. He was just, like, was unhinged. Just unhinged. But it was... It was intense. Yeah. And the crew, so they tried to wait, but they couldn't. They make it outside. They're thrilled. And Grace is like, Grace is in Lana. And they were talking. Lana's like, look, I know the way to the road. It's like two miles that way. Let's just go. We're going to get out of here. And Grace tells, stops everyone. She's like, we're going to the road together, but we still don't trust you. So we're separating at the road. And I was like, honestly, that's the smartest choice because who knows what Lana's going to do. Right. She's lost it. So we're back to the movie. And Sister Mary is obsessed with the torture that is happening in this movie. And she is just, like, enthralled. When Thresden notices that all these people are missing, and he goes to tell a security guard, who then goes to tell Sister Mary, and her response is, but the Christians are about to be eaten. Yeah. And which she doesn't I wanna, forgot that they had... That. I had forgotten that they had literally just shown us alligators on the screen. And so then I was like, wow, I didn't think there was cannibalism in this movie. There wasn't. It was alligators, but my brain did not process it. That's totally fine. That's, you know, what happens. Could be cannibalism. Who knows? 
you never know. There's a lot going on in this movie. Yeah. Um, so we go back to Dar- Dr. Arden and Shelly. And she's trying to, like, talk her way out of things. So she's like, I was trying to go to the infirmary. I feel terrible. Like, I've been really sick. And so they let me. They told me I could go. And then Dr. Arden tries to rape her because he doesn't believe her. And she, and then he can't do it. And she starts laughing at him. And he knocks her out. Yeah, he doesn't like being laughed at. Doesn't like that. So we're back to our trio. And they're making their way out when they stumble upon the carcass of our dead woman. And they're like, oh, I think we found our missing woman. And then they go to the side and they Mm -hmm. see a creature eating another body. And they start trying to run another direction. And there's another creature eating another body. And so they just get, they get chased back into the tunnel. Interestingly, the creatures that are eating the bodies to me, obviously we didn't see them well, but to me, Mm -hmm. they look like the bloody face masks that the kids had on in the future. So that's an interesting, interesting to potential connection. Yeah. So we've, we've got our trio who's run back into the tunnel. And then we go back to Sister Mary Eunice, who is waking Jude from her drunken slumber. Okay, but before that, you said when we had Sister Jude running through the hallways that you don't really get to see who she sees. But that's not true. Well, you see, but it's very quick, I guess. It's, it's so quick that yeah. it was one of those times where I just paused it at the right second on accident again. Mm. <laughs> so I so yeah um, because I'm apparently magic with pausing, yeah. but no, you for yeah. sure for sure see it. It's a whole ass alien. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's our first like real sighting. Yeah. So, which when yes. Sister Jude wakes up, she is very still upset by. Yeah, because they're trying to tell her she's like the security guys, and she's like. They saw it too. Everyone saw it too. And then she's like, wait, 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 what's going on? Because of course she's waking up from being drunk and she's just seen an alien. Yeah. So not all there. And mm-hmm. so um, she goes, so once she realizes what's going on, she goes back and she just goes off on Frank. And she's like, how on earth did you let these three people out? Now they're missing. We're never doing a movie night again. However, the three people that we believe are the ones she's speaking of are sitting in their seats soaking wet because instead she means the Mexican woman. She means Shelly and she means Pepper who in the midst of everything ran off to go pee. Yeah. And those are our three missing people now. And we know where the Mexican woman is. We've seen her carcass of her body. Yep. And now we get to learn what happened to Shelly. She is still with Dr. Arden. However, now she's on an operating table and he starts telling her that everyone thinks she's missing. They think that she's run out of the tunnels and that she's escaped. So they're hunting for her in all the wrong wrong places. Yeah. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm going to run away. I'm going to do all this. And he's like, well, here's the thing you can't. And he takes the sheet off of her body and he has amputated her legs. And that's the end of the episode. Like the fuck? What a way. What a way to go. So. Ooh. Boy. Do you want to punch in the face? Um, I'm going to go three for three and punch Dr. Arden. Love it. That is excellent that guys. Choice. Excellent choice. Um, I'm going to go two for two. And I'm going with Lana because she just can't get it together. And she is really messing everything up for everyone. I love that. Like, been, I love that Sister Mary Eunice was like literally possessed by the devil and like fucking people's lives up on yeah. purpose. And we we're just like, eh, there's worse people out there. Eh, we've seen demons. We know what those are. And but like if Lana wouldn't have had this whole situation in the first episode or like the last episode where she was yelling about them escaping. Yeah, Shelly would have never lost her legs. Correct. 100%. She's directly responsible now for Shelly's legs. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right on that. So, um, yeah, so who 
that is your MVP. I had an idea, and then I lost my idea. Um, I'm torn between two. But I also feel like I can't. I mean, I might as well just go three for three on this one, too, um, and pick Kid. May as well. May as well. We'll might just as well. be very consistent this season. Very consistent. Uh, um, because yeah. he... When... First of all, he forgave Lana when he did not need to. He let them... Found, made sure that they included Shelly in the, like, kidnapping plan. He, like, was okay with the fact that people didn't like him and like didn't trust him and like wanted to work to show that he was trustworthy rather than just like but like go with their opinions and then when he found the like weird creatures in the like woods he didn't just like make a run for it he like made sure they all stayed together and protected them and like made like got them to be okay also so yeah um that's a great answer um i love the consistency um i'm gonna go with shelly that was my yeah toss up i thought it might be because she is so much smarter than everyone gives her credit for so much. she bides her time she tries to take care of everyone um she throws herself on the fire for everyone else and she should not have lost her legs but lana sucks I mean, and um, so does Dr. Arden, because fuck that guy. Well, yeah, of course, of course, yes. That's like a no-brainer. <laughs> but, you know, he's he was going to cut someone's legs off, probably. It just didn't have to be hers. And Lana didn't mess everything up. True. Um. So, do you have any predictions? Well, um, I mean, Dr. Arden's a Nazi. I don't know if that's really a prediction or just like a conclusion that I've come to. Sure. Um, um i wonder it's not really a prediction so much as a wondering um how long we're going to deal with the sister mary, sister mary eunice as a demon thing um because it's gonna get old fast um just because there's so many other things happening that are so much more compelling that if they don't deal with it sooner rather than later, it's going to get old fast. Um, so I don't know about that. Um, I don't know. Um, Pepper, who knows what the fuck she's doing. That's... There's no way to know. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of like things that I hope are like the pieces of the story that they pick up on next, but I don't like really have any predictions with where they're going to go with it. Mm -hmm. Where would you like them to pick up next first? First of all, I want them to get the demon out of Sister Marinus over it. Um, I we've just had a lot of exorcism lately. That's yeah, I'm, I'm I'm over it. Um, I hope that they um I hope that they go more into grace soon because I feel like that is a giant question mark. Um. I want, I'm worried about what's going to happen to Dr. Thresden because he's getting himself involved in the shenanigans. Um, and um, I'm worried about Sister Jude a little bit. I'm afraid this spiral is going to not go really well. Spiral. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I told you this last week and I don't remember when all of your predictions were made because we've recorded a lot of ex episodes twice yeah but some of your predictions <laughs> will be discussed next episode and i did not say this last time but we will meet an unidentified person from history joining the asylum don't read the title 
what we title the next episode. <laughs> oh, does it just like straight tell you in the episode? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like funny. The synopsis is like an unidentified woman, and it's like it's in the name. It's fine. So, <laughs> I um, I wanted to look up. I was I wanted to look up how many episodes there were in the season. Um, the other day, and I literally handed Monica my phone, and I go and I opened IMDb, and I opened American History or Horror Story, and then I go, "You look at it because I'm afraid I'm going to see some shit I don't need to see." Just tell me what, how many, what is the number of episodes? I don't. <laughs> that's all. I just need to know the number, but I can't look because I don't know. <laughs> Lucky number thirteen. Yes, I do know that now. It was mostly because I was trying to plan a recording sure. schedule. I was like trying to plan calendars and I was like, the re- I don't need to know any of the details. I need to know the physical number so I can plan my recording schedule. That's right. it. <laughs> yep. yep. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah. So that's that. So if you have any thoughts, feelings, if you are just as unhinged as we are, um, if this is the first episode you for some reason listen to, listen to like at least one more before you decide if you like us because this one is a lot a lot Um, but you can email us death and aliens at gmail.com you can find us on all of the social media at death and aliens you can find me at ce cloud 13 and you can follow me everywhere at e-m-k-a-y underscore superstar and we will see you for hopefully a new episode on sci-fi sunday